Well, today we need to talk about something that's a little sad and a, a little bit near and dear to my heart just due to the inspiration provided because we're talking about something that's happening in the Nintendo community here on YouTube. But I do have a video later today that's more like news centric and all that. Don't worry, guys. We got a pretty big banger coming your way. That's right. We're dropping two videos today plus our live stream tonight. However, I want to talk about this because it involves what I do. I'm a full time Nintendo specific YouTuber and I'm one that covers Nintendo news and this, I guess is community news. But what if I were to tell you guys that essentially, the end of Game Explain has arrived. And that just feels mind blowing for me to say. They are one of the largest Nintendo YouTube channels. In fact, in the space I'm in covering Nintendo news, they're at the top, or at least were at the top. We gotta talk about it here because an announcement was made by the founder of Game Explain, Andre Seegers. He put out this twit longer. And, oh boy, it doesn't sound good. So an announcement regarding the Game Explain YouTube channel. I'm saddened to say that due to the softening revenue, it's become impossible to continue to sufficiently provide for my full-time team members. I tried everything imaginable to avoid this for as long as possible, including foregoing any payment myself for more than two years and reinvesting 100% of the revenue back into the company. But sadly, these efforts weren't enough. I couldn't be more proud of what my team has accomplished in the time I was fortunate enough to have them. They have created so many incredible video features that I believe are among the very best to be found on gaming YouTube. I'll miss having my team here, but I know Joey and Tris have a promising future. They are both extremely talented all-star creators and would make an amazing addition to any team. And I know they will both continue to kick a ton of ass at whatever it is they do next. Now, there's other stuff out there, some goodbye posts from Joey and Tris on X saying goodbye. I don't know how sudden this is. That's the thing we... This feels really sudden publicly, but we don't know how sudden this was behind the scenes, if there was some leeway, if there's been severance package payouts, or any of that sort of stuff. We know that Game Explained has been embroiled in a little bit of employee drama uh, that we've covered, and I'll link some of those old coverage videos down below, uh, dealing with you know a lot of the people that ended up at Good Vibes Gaming, right? That, that, that YouTube channel is uh, fairly successful, and that involves a lot of people that were formerly of well, Game Explained. But... Again, there's a lot of growing pains there. I talked back during those controversies that, well, Andre Seegers maybe didn't handle everything in the best possible way. I can understand as somebody who started this Game Explain channel, came from IGN, and kind of just got popular and was learning things on the fly that maybe everything isn't perfect. There's a lot of learning things. When you're at the top and you're trying to you know, manage people for the first time ever and manage paychecks and manage workloads, there's just a lot of learning that needs to be done and mistakes will be made. So I was never really that mad at Andre Seegers. Of course, I was also not someone who ever directly worked for him. Now, Andre Seegers is somebody that uh, I do have a deep respect for because of his work at Game Explain. And heck, he's been on my podcast and I was on another podcast with him uh, about a year ago. So like and on somebody else's channel, I think it was the Highly in Game cast or something. Either way, I was, I was on a podcast with him and Pierce Schneider and I was on uh, he had, he had, was on one of my shows not too long ago, actually. I think it was like earlier this year or late last year. It was on the Nintendo Prime podcast, not not the Nintendo Byte podcast. But anyways, who knows? Maybe he'll be on a future episode. I hope that you're not upset by this video because I'm not trying to upset anything. I'm just looking at this from the outside looking in and mostly want to reminisce a little bit because Game Explain is one of the inspirations for when I ended up losing my position at Zelda Informer not going to go down that road. We don't, for those who don't even know the story, it's okay. You don't need to. Uh, but what I find fascinating is that Game Explain was what actually inspired me to realize maybe I should be doing Nintendo news on YouTube instead of doing a traditional website. And this is the state of Game Explain today, right? There are, we got 1,410,000 subscribers. Who knows what the, the hundreds are or anything because you only get three digits. But, uh, and there's this 1.4, 1 million, which is a lot. Well, I mean, you can kind of see in their videos that like the views haven't been great. You know, 16,000, 21, 13, 12, 14, 17, 12. These are the kind of numbers I can do on my channel. And my channel is significantly smaller than theirs. So 
Uh, it's understandable. Even when you see like this 31,000, yeah, I can have a video pop off for that sometimes. But their video views relative to their subscriber size, it really shows like, yeah, there's a, been a fall off. And this isn't even just recent. It's been going on for a while. 10,000 views on this one, 8.4 thousand, 4.3. So like you can see that they, they've been... It's been a while, right? This is just obviously the recent uploads because they were putting up multiple videos a day to cover all the, all the individual news. Uh, and I, I feel like there's a couple of things I want to talk about because I also recently did a live stream talking about my struggles right now as a Nintendo YouTuber and how I almost quit, but we're actually going to stick by for another couple of years and see what happens. Uh, and I think I'll end up being okay. I don't think I'm going to regret that decision. But there's some things that as I'm, I'm looking at their channel that I honestly think they needed to evolve. Uh, Game Explain's been doing things a certain way for a long time. And some of that is like these shorter videos. Uh, there, if you guys ever wonder why I don't put out and spam you guys with like three, four videos a day with all these different news topics, it's because these little one minute 52, two minute, even these five minute 34 second videos, they don't really make a lot of money. They could they could end up getting a hundred thousand views, but the revenue on it is very little because there's only one ad played, if any ads played at all. Sometimes on these shorter videos, there's no ads that get played for a majority of the audience. So you end up actually making very, very low revenue. And as near as I can tell, based on the videos I've seen, Game Explain never really took on sponsors. Now you could justify doing these smaller videos if you have sponsors that are really supplementing and the big driving factor behind your revenue. But near as I can tell in all the years I've watched Game Explain, they never really had sponsorships to supplement any of that revenue. Uh, so I don't know if that is something that Andre Seegers is just vehemently against and that is just an avenue he's not willing to go down. Or, uh, you know, if they just didn't evolve their content. And that was really the brux of it. Like, yeah, you're covering news and the news is what the news is, but maybe instead of just covering the news, you should create discussion around the news and that should be the sole video instead of rushing to be like the first person to get that news out. Look, I realize that I, anytime I put up a news video, I'm not the first person to get the video out, yet some of my videos will still have higher views than some of Game Explains because I'm taking an angle with it and um, presenting it and giving the news, but then also creating a discussion around it. And I think that discussion is valuable. I think on social media, and I think we forget sometimes, YouTube's a social platform. It's a social media. We have the, obviously the one-on-one -on -one conversations through video, live streams, you know, it down in the comments, community sections. So I, you have to treat it in a more social way. You can't just be like Twitter. You know, you, you, you see like a two minute video um, being like, oh yeah, here's this news quick update for like a minute and a half, two minutes. And it's like, that's like throwing on a tweet and a tweet is fine, but a tweet isn't necessarily always a driving conversation starter. Sometimes it just kind of sits there. So I think that's what happened with a lot of their content and they just didn't evolve with YouTube. And I talked a lot about this with me and I've been talking with a lot of content creators behind the scenes. I'll even shout out one right now, RGT85. I haven't had a conversation with him privately about this, uh, but he made a video today as well talking about the Game Explain situation. He actually talked about my channel as well because I did a live stream earlier this week on Tuesday, so just two days ago, uh, where I talked about some serious stuff about some of the struggles of being a content creator right now in this YouTube space, what I think is going on, and all of that. And I actually agree with much of uh, Sean's opinions on a lot of this. Uh, it is hard to be a Nintendo YouTuber, especially a news Nintendo YouTuber in 2024, because look, the switch is on the downturn. The interest level isn't as high as it once was. And Nintendo doesn't have like any massive system sellers coming out. Like I'm going to create a lot of Echoes of Wisdom content in the next couple of months, but I mean, it's going to get a fraction of the sort of views like Tears of the Kingdom would get. Uh, same with covering like Mario and Luigi Brothership. That's going to get a fraction of the views that like covering Mario Odyssey did or covering Super Mario 3D All-Stars in 2019. It's going to be a fraction of those kind of views because, you know, Nintendo's got a new system coming. And this is what happens every time a new system's coming from Nintendo. There's sort of a lull. Now, I would argue in this transition year, presuming Switch 2 comes out at some point next year, that makes this year a transition year. This is one of the best transition years Nintendo's ever had, right? They've had a lot of games come out, a lot of niche games, but a lot of different games that make me happy. Uh, heck, I'm picking up Famicom. Who, if you had told me 10 years ago that in 2024 I'd be picking up a brand new Famicom Detective Club game in 2024, I would have been like, dude, you're crazy. 
<laughs> like, no way. I barely, I'm barely aware of this franchise, and it was only on the NES, and it was only in Japan. Like, there's no way. And here we are in 2024. That's what we're getting. Like, that's the kind of stuff we're getting. So I sit back and I go, yeah, the interest level is just lower. Not as many people are on YouTube right now searching and looking for Nintendo news because the only news they really want to hear is, hey, Nintendo Switch 2 is being revealed on X day. Nintendo Switch 2 is coming out on X day. Here's a look at the Nintendo Switch 2. That's kind of what Nintendo fans on YouTube are, are essentially waiting for. That's not saying all of you feel that way. Of course, there's some of you that's going to watch every morsel of my Echoes of Wisdom coverage, every morsel of Mario and Luigi coverage and Jamboree and anything else, right? You guys are, there's some of you that are just going to consume it because you are a little bit obsessed with Nintendo stuff like I am. So you like to enjoy all those little tiny morsels of stuff. But, you know, a lot of people are just waiting for the big thing, right? Some people have set down their Switches for the year and they're like, hey, just let me know when we got real news on Switch 2. And I hear you. Uh, so, yeah, that's what, what's happening in many cases uh, where a lot of us are just kind of floating around here seeing what we could do. Now, there's things we could do to obviously stemmy that tide a bit, not have the dips in viewership be so significant. And some of that is just better titles, better thumbnails, better coverage, better topic choices. There are things that can be done to, you know, raise the the, the floor, right, a little bit. It's not going to raise the ceiling, but raise the floor uh, and, and be better. But for Game Explain, I don't really know that there's much they can do right now. They got rid of their full-time staff. They might still have a couple part-timers, but in the end, uh, Andre Seegers is going to have to massively change how the channel does things. Is it even going to be a news channel moving forward? Will it focus exclusively on analysis and game reviews moving forward? Because I don't think that Andre Seegers, as the only full-time person working at Game Explain, is going to suddenly personally himself bust out three, four videos a day. I just, I just don't see him doing that. And I know how hard it is for me to bust out too. Now, my videos are much longer format, so they're actually more complicated to put together. But still, I just don't see him doing that. I don't think that's something he wants to do. If it was, well, then he would have been the one hosting and putting out most of these videos himself. I just don't think he has an interest in making that kind of content. Maybe that's where some of the conflict that Game Explain comes from when you see some former employees that sometimes don't have the nicest things to say. Uh, or you're seeing accusations or all this stuff. There is some drama that always surrounds any big channel, and I'm not going to sit here and dive into it. There's like a brand new accusation on Twitter about possibly they were copying or stealing content. I think that's a little, a little far. Uh, but again, I haven't obviously seen all of the evidence. In in the end, I, I just think that Game Explain got a little complacent. Uh, they were really, really good at this quick news riding the wave even like in the wii u days they were still somehow finding some success um and, and and riding that switch wave and you know doing things a little bit in the wii days as well like they were they had a certain way of doing things and it just kind of never evolved and look if you just stay doing the same thing on repeat for you know a decade plus you're going to end up stagnating the audience it grows up if you want to attract new audiences in, you got to do new things. Or if you're still going to be a news channel, you got to find a different way to do that news. And it's just the way it is. Like, you know, the, the, them re uploading trailers, uh, them just posting quick little news blips, they have more than that going on. Of course, they've been doing more community tournaments and trying to have more long form discussion content sometimes, but it still was only sometimes uh, rather than all the time. So I'm sure the revenue at Game Explained probably isn't that great. Do they make more than I do? Well, I, I, I assume so. Uh, we can take one little look at this to show you that they obviously make some money. See, there's this little tool out there called View Stats. It was created by Mr. Beast team, and we're not getting all the Mr. Beast controversy. I'm just interested in what this tool does. And if you look, you know, in the last month, they've had 3.75 million views, which is still a lot of views. But again, a lot of those views are on that really short form content. And when it's on that little short form content, that doesn't make that much money. Now, you can even look at this estimated revenue, right? It's 2.3 to 7.4. I don't know. These estimated revenue figures are pretty accurate, but I, it's always like, is it accurate to the low end or is it accurate to the high end? Let's say it's accurate to the lower end. I mean, that's that's pretty rough to try to survive on anywhere. If it's accurate to the high end, that might be all right for an ind one individual. If you look at my channel, when I when I type it in here, uh, you'll see that, you know, my numbers 
are, are kind of in range a little bit of game explains. Uh, this stuff is pretty accurate. Look at this, 900 to 2.6. Now, I do make a smidge more than that, but it's pretty close because one thing they can't estimate, they can't estimate any sort of super chat revenue and stuff like that. So I make more than this because of my live streams. But like for ad revenue, like this is this is pretty accurate. And my high end in ad revenue hits Game Explains low end, and that's on 367,000 views. And it's because View Stats realizes that I probably make more ad revenue per video I upload on average because my videos are longer than Game Explains. So yeah, uh, they need to change the way they're doing things. And that's just reality. Uh, I don't know what the plans are, but I, here's what I can say. It, what we've known Game Explained to be the last, you know, 15 years is no more. Uh, Game Explained as we know it is dead. What's next for it? What Andre Seegers is going to do to keep it alive so at least he can support himself? I don't know. Uh, I do re wish Joey, who... Uh, I don't know if he really likes me that much, but it doesn't really matter. I do wish him luck that he lands on his feet and finds a good job or gets successful with his YouTube channel. Uh, whether it's Tris, don't know them at all. Uh, wish them luck in in finding uh, a new place. And anyone else that you know might have you know these, these are the full time staff getting let go. If there's any of the part timers that were let go as well, I hope that they end up landing on their feet too. And you know what? I do wish luck to Andre Seegers. I have a lot of deep respect for what you've been doing and for how long you've been doing it and for being literally the standard for covering Nintendo news and analysis and all of that in the Nintendo online space for so damn long. But you didn't evolve, and I feel like that's the biggest issue. Not just the lull this year, because you said this has been going on for multiple years that you haven't paid yourself and probably been you know on sort of a dip for a few years. I just think that... Uh, you need to make some major changes, and I I, I wish you luck, man. Um, I am Nintendo Robogents from Nintendo Prime. We're going to kind of leave it at that. I got some news and stuff to get into later today. Uh, it should be some fun. Exciting news, actually. But uh, wish you guys luck out there. It can be tough in every job field, not just here on YouTube.